My name is Leanne Young, and today we'll be thinking about ways to use co-teaching and multiple models of co-teaching that we can use to support Tier 1 instruction. Here's my contact information. You can find me uh, online at leyoung.com, uh, my email address, my Twitter account. And if you'd like to download a handout for this session, you can browse to layoung.com backslash resources and scroll down until you see this handout. So our learning targets for this session are to take a look at the six models of co-teaching that we can use to support our Tier 1 instruction. Actually, the literature talks about seven models of co-teaching. Uh, but I'll make a case for why I think the seventh model of co-teaching is really a blending of the other six models. We'll think about how uh, co-teaching and the, uh, the practices of these six models uh, support the features of tiered instruction. And you'll have a chance to think about uh, when within your own instruction that you might use uh, one or more of these examples of co-teaching in your classroom. So as we, as we think about the tiers of instruction, it is important that we remember that Tier 3 is not special education. I know that that's a review for you all. Uh, most students, even those who do have disabilities that you're already serving, do not need uh, a Tier 3 level of support, this level of intensity of uh, intervention always or for everything. Uh, many students who have disabilities do not require ongoing intensive intervention or support. I was at an international school recently uh, that was trying to implement uh, response to instruction and intervention. And as they were having meetings about uh, students, they talked about their tier two kids and their tier three kids. And it, it is important that we remember that there aren't tier two or tier three students but there are students who have skills that require two, tier two or tier three levels of support. That we always want to see this as something that's dynamic and that students flow in and out of different levels of support depending on their needs and depending on what the data show us. But today we want to think about tier one level of instruction and how we can bring in some of those practices that we've reserved for intervention into uh, our everyday instruction. This tiered approach is identical regardless of the diagnosis. So as we've already learned, tier one instruction doesn't mean business as usual. It means that we implement a variety of practices within everyday instruction. And co-teaching is one of those practices that we can bring into tier one instruction that really uh, can be a key to success in in combining the practices that we've often reserved for intervention uh, with our uh, daily curriculum. So what I'd like for us to do first is to pause the video and take a few minutes first individually um, to reflect on how what, what is it that you think of when you think of co-teaching? How does that look? And then take a few minutes to share with people around you how co-teaching looks now, uh, what your reflections are on the way that co-teaching looks now. As people reflect on their common experiences with co-teaching, the first model, one teach, one assist, is often what comes to mind. In this model, one teacher has the primary responsibility for instruction, while the second teacher assists students. Unfortunately, the way that one teach one assists is often implemented looks more like the second teacher helping a student who is struggling, uh, more in the role of a paraprofessional. For co-teaching to be implemented properly, both teachers have to agree on the model that's being used and plan purposefully for its implementation. So having a second teacher walk around the room or support a couple of teachers as a paraprofessional is not the same as one teach, one assist. When we think about one teach, one assist and how we plan for that, uh, being from Kentucky, I sometimes use basketball analogies, uh, but we want to think of this more as zone defense rather than man-to-man -man defense. In other words, the old-fashioned model, especially in international schools, of having a shadow teacher 
is not the same as one teach, one assist. This is not purposeful planning of exactly how a student would be uh, supported in um, a systematic and evidence-based way. Uh, we want to think about uh, the second teacher and one teach, one assist being available to support any student who needs it, but doing so in a purposeful way, uh, giving the least amount of assistance in order for the student to be successful. It's also important that we remember it does not have to be the general educator who's taking the lead for instruction in any given lesson. It could be that a specialist is uh, demonstrating a reading strategy, for example, and that the general education teacher is assisting students who need support. So none of these models imply um, implies that one teacher is of a particular discipline. In the second model of co-teaching, one teach, one observe, one teacher takes the primary responsibility again for instruction while the second teacher is observing. Now, the second teacher could be observing a variety of things. The teacher could be observing uh, students and taking data on their performance. Uh, the second teacher could be observing a particular student, perhaps uh, for behavior data. It could be that the second teacher is observing the teacher. Uh, this could be uh, evaluative or this could be to learn a new skill. So it could be, for example, that a specialist uh, has developed a, a method for using graphic organizers that's been really successful with a lot of students in a first grade classroom. And rather than pulling the students who are struggling and using that graphic organizer technique with those students, the teacher may come in and teach the entire class how to use the graphic organizer technique. And the general education teacher may observe this lesson so that that teacher now has this uh, in his or her bag of tricks to be able to teach in the future. In this way, the teacher who is bringing in, the specialist who is bringing in this uh, strategy that was often reserved for intervention can be used uh, to support all students in, in uh, a universal design for learning. So we know that that technique is incredibly helpful to students who have certain types of uh, difficulties. Um, with planning writing, for example, or for reading comprehension, but it's helpful to a lot of students. It can be helpful to everybody. So in this way, we're combining uh, co-teaching with universal design for learning. Station teaching is a model in which the co-teaching pair divides the instructional content into parts. It doesn't have to be the same number of parts as teachers. You may have three stations and two teachers, or four stations and two teachers, and the students rotate around uh, to uh, each of the stations. It may be that you have four teaching stations, uh, two of them have a teacher, and students rotate to three stations, and in this way you can differentiate. So you may have a station that is designed to include uh, supplemental instruction and combine those models of co-teaching. Uh, it may be that you have a one independent station that allows students to uh, extend their knowledge and you select which stations uh, students uh, rotate uh, among. In parallel teaching, each of the teachers takes part of the group. The group is divided in half and Half goes uh, to each teacher. The teachers each are teaching the same content. They're using the same instructional techniques in general. Uh, the only advantage here is to uh, decreasing the group size. But each teacher has the responsibility for teaching the same content. With supplemental teaching, one teacher works with students at grade level and the second teacher works with those students who need support. Supplemental teaching should not be happening as a replacement for core instruction. So when we think about how this fits within a response to instruction and intervention model, it does not mean uh, that we have a group of students receiving reading instruction and the students who are below grade level go receive uh, supplemental instruction instead. Rather, all students receive the uh, core instruction and students who are needing supplemental instruction uh, receive that from uh, the second teacher in this model of co-teaching. So when is this delivered um, is a common question 
And uh, I described earlier how we can combine supplemental teaching with station teaching as a way to seamlessly integrate this within, um, within a, a portion of the day. Uh, we could also think about the times when students maybe are unable to access the curriculum. So let's say we've delivered a core reading instruction and uh, then students are uh, invited to engage in an independent reading experience and there's a group of students uh, who needs um, a supplemental instruction. They're maybe unable to be successful in this independent reading experience. That would be a great time uh, for uh, a second teacher to deliver supplemental instruction to those students while uh, the teacher who took the lead for instruction, uh, core instruction, is uh, supporting the students in, in their independent reading. We do want to be careful that we never pull students for supplemental instruction um, from their favorite uh, thing to do, for example. So a lot of times um, uh, a direction can be to be thinking, uh, well, what's most important? What's most important in our curriculum? And, and while that may seem logical, it's also uh, contextual for the student. We have to think about what's most interesting to the student. Where does the student feel most successful? And it may be that uh, art is where the student feels the most successful and feels the most enjoyment in school. And so we wouldn't want to select uh, that portion of time for any sort of supplemental instruction, even if it is within the general education classroom. Uh, you don't have to pull a student out of the classroom uh, to have pulled them away from uh, core instruction or to have pulled them away from something that's happening within the general education classroom. And so we want to be careful about even when our location continues to be the general education classroom and we have two teachers in the same room co-teaching, we still don't, um, we want to be careful about uh, where we, where and when we select um, to offer supplemental instruction. Uh, the next model of co-teaching is alternative teaching. And uh, we all know that there are an in, there's an infinite number of ways to teach any given uh, subject, any given lesson. Every teacher brings his or her own flair and interests and, and methods to uh, teaching. Of course, we, we always want to stay true to evidence-based teaching practices, but every, everybody brings their own uh, methods and, and flair to this. In alternative teaching, uh, each teacher teaches the same content, but teaches it in a different way. And so like parallel teaching, the group is divided, and half of the group goes with one teacher, half goes with another teacher. Um, they get the content, and then the groups switch and get the same content again, but taught in a different way. And this uh, can be extremely useful both for reducing the group size, but if we're teaching complex content, complex information to students, uh, it can be helpful to have multiple ways of, uh, of learning that material. The final or seventh model of co-teaching is called team teaching. And even though this is in the literature referred to as the seventh model of co-teaching, I would argue that it, it really is good use of all six of the other models. In team teaching, we can't tell the difference between which teacher is taking the lead in instruction and which one is supporting because both teachers take the lead uh, for various portions of the content. Both are actively involved in the lesson, both are teaching. There's this seamless movement between taking the lead and supporting. Um, we have our mind readers here as the uh, photograph for this slide because this this often involves the times where I've seen team teaching be most successful um, are when there are two teachers who have worked together uh, sometimes for years and have developed this this sort of ability to know what the other person is thinking and, and where the other person is going next and uh, they are able to plan for using all of the models of co-teaching um, but within a, within a lesson that is team taught, we would be unable to see the difference between which teacher is taking the lead and which uh, person is supporting. Uh, but it is still planned and um, planned purposefully together. With all of these models of co-teaching, uh, it is, again, it's not haphazard. It is uh, carefully 
uh, planned based on the outcomes, based on the individual group of students, based on the complexity of the content, based on the strengths and unique skills of each of the, the teachers. It's not discipline specific uh, so much as it is what what are the what are the strengths that I bring? How how can I contribute can contribute best um, to this particular lesson and these outcomes? So what I'd like for you to do next is in pairs. I'd like for you to think about a skill that you currently teach and the way that you currently teach it and consider uh, which of the models of co-teaching might you try for that lesson? Which one might enhance um, the outcomes that you're seeing for students now? How might we use co-teaching, one of the models, to bring in both the expertise of the general educator and a special educator or an EL teacher or a reading specialist. How can we bring in the expertise of both of those people to a lesson that you currently teach using one of these models of co-teaching? So I'd like for you to consider that in pairs first. You have a uh, planning sheet that's uh, available to you to, to think through those models and, and how you might uh, plan to use each of those. So choose one that you think might be uh, most useful. Uh, plan that as pairs, and then I'd like for everyone to share with the group uh, the way that you're currently teaching it, what kind of outcomes you've uh, seen, what models you considered, where you, which model you ended up selecting, and how you might try that. And then give one another feedback. Uh, I hope you're comfortable in giving one another feedback and challenging each other as you think about how, uh, how you might use these as a tool uh, to bring in additional evidence-based intervention practices into our uh, Tier 1 core instruction.